Hello and welcome to this little update of my functional combat capable power armor project. I'm going to keep it short but I'm just going to go over a few new design features of the suit which are all things I'll be able to carry forward to the next prototype that hopefully should be making soon. We'll start off with a helmet. This is probably my sixth design of a helmet and currently the best. It's considerably lighter than previous versions. It currently has a visor of 10mm thick polycarbonate. I don't want to make it to 10mm layers of polycarbonate, however, when forming it by hand I did realise that I'd need a jig to hold the two pieces together, compress together as they're cooled, or if not, they get a little uh, bits of separation where it's not quite held the same when it's cooled. So I'll have to do that on the next version. I'm trying to make the helmet stay mist-free and fairly cool without power in case of a power failure. So I do have this mouthpiece made up of ceramic and carbon fibre grills. As you can imagine, it still is going to be a bit of a shot trap. It offers better protection than nothing, but I do want to actually try putting a shield over the front of it and maybe actually reduce the amount of grills that are there to increase breathing while having the protection from the shield that goes over the front. On the next prototype helmet, I intend on having this piece removable so you can fit different pieces, take it off, fit a respirator into that gap if you want. But these things really need to be machined into a casing that is bonded into the helmet itself which I weren't able to do at this point, hence why it's just bonded in, clean and not removable. Also, I do have better attachment points at the back for both counterweight and a bracket, which is currently made out of plastic. In the future, it will most likely be made out of powder-coated aluminium. That does allow for a torch and a rail to be fitted on the side as well. To make this helmet lighter, what I've done is I've had the frontal protection, which you can probably see on this ridge. That frontal protection I made to the same standard as the rest of the suit which I've been able to test against 5.56 five, out of the bolt action at 25 yards. So you'll have that full rifle protection on the front and on the sides around the mouthpiece. And there's reduced layers on the top and on the sides, which I haven't been able to test yet, but I'm pretty sure you're going to be looking at swapping handguns with those parts, so it would be level 3A. And then at the back, the armour's reduced some more. It's mainly just Kevlar at the back, so again, it'll need testing, but I should stop low velocity shrapnel, which the back part of the head can also be covered by the top of the backpack as well. Of course, without the degree of counterbalance that's required, which is why the bracket is more mounted rearward and the torch is mounted towards the rear to offset that balance. Also, the film looks pretty good on photos, but I did actually think it was a bronze film. I wouldn't have bought it if I thought it was that chrome. But nevertheless, I'm pretty pleased with the helmet in general. I think I'm nearing the final design with the helmet. Still work to do on it, still things to try. But I'm certainly getting close to a final design of it. Moving around to the shoulders and pauldrons, I made some improved prop pauldrons, just out of 5mm acrylic and then formed roughly to shape, painted black of course. They give an idea what it'll be like in the future. What I've realised is realistically, I don't think the pauldrons will actually be higher than the motors, of which you can see where the motor would come out of this hole. I can't really see it being higher than that because any higher than that, and you just end up with this issue, which I might move that where when you raise your arm, you always get contact with the top of the chest plate. But as you can imagine, if the armour stops just above the motor, then you should have clearance all the way to the top and it won't clash. And round into a handheld fashion. You can see that I've now took the back of the legs off, used part of the back of the leg armour to extend the side armour out so you still have the coverage from the side of the leg without the discomfort and just this weird feeling of something being on the back of your legs whether it's touching or not. That the rear armour used to give you, it'll also help thermal regulation, it helps with putting them on. This is the type of thing where the compromise of taking away the armour is, is fair for the benefits, even if it is uh, gonna be a powered suit of armour. And going up to the thigh, I've done the same thing there with the additional piece of side armour, which has allowed me to fit a holster. Of course, this is an airsoft gun for anyone watching in the UK. I know most of you are Americans, but you know, airsoft guns are barely allowed in the UK, so. Always worth a mention. But you can see how that permanent side armour frees up some space for some more things. Which brings me on to this cape looking affair around here. So this is a little bit tricky for me to film when it's on the frame. So I'm still in wobbly handheld mode. I wanted a weight that would cover the back of the legs, including what would be the gaps at the back of the knees, regardless of where you put armour on. Even if it's just shrapnel protection, because obviously front should be facing enemy. So I thought, what about kind of a half a cape or half a gambeson, where it just attaches to the waist and then hangs down by lower legs? 
can be held on in multiple different ways in the future, whether it's like a belt or Velcro or physically fixed on like this one is in this C section and box section that folds into each other. Right now, of course, this is just a cheap piece of material, but in the future, it can be a waterproof layer on the outside, and then it will be multiple layers of Kevlar on the inside. And then what I can do is I can actually lace ceramic into the inside of it using rubber resin to bond it in between the layers of the Kevlar, which can offer some rifle protection, possibly actually creating more protection than the plates on the back of the legs actually did. Surprisingly, it doesn't get in the way either. You can sit on it easily. It doesn't get tangled between your legs. You never actually notice it's been there. So it actually works way better than I thought it would. For anyone who's watched my previous videos, you might have noticed that the waist piece of this was in general quite lacking. And to be honest, it still is now, but at least with what I've got here, you can see the general idea of where it's gonna go. So the chest piece is gonna get lowered down by another inch or so. I just may, ended up making it far shorter than I thought I'd need to do. The leg pieces will be the same, particularly the thigh around this area. Not by much, probably just by an inch or so, but when you add that together with the chest piece, that'll narrow the gap quite significantly. At which point I'll either have multiple pieces of plate armor hanging down like this with a groin pad that would cover all of this gap. Or my latest idea, after the thought experiment of half a cape and the Kevlar and ceramic that you could lace into it, is that I'll add a flexible piece of armor like so which will look something like that. You can imagine in each of these fake quilted squares, you can imagine a piece of ceramic, although it'd probably be a hexagonal piece of ceramic to fit together nicely. Bonded in with rubber resin, again, in between the gaps of Kevlar. There's obviously gonna be potential for rounds to go in between the gaps of said ceramic. It will offer full protection, the plate does, but it'll certainly offer quite a lot while offering great flexibility and movement, particularly while you're walking, because you're always just gonna get a bit of this flapping from side to side as you're walking, which is why I start to think a single solid plate as a groin piece won't be suitable. And I think this method in general could be certainly a worthy compromise. Obviously testing will have to be done. That's most likely gonna get done at the point of making the next prototype. Before I finish, I'll briefly mention the situation with the electronics. I still haven't bought any of the actuators yet, or the batteries, even though it's ready for it. To be blunt, I'm running out of the money for that, which is why I'm trying to find an investor at the minute, whether that's a partner or a sponsor or a venture capitalist, who would consider taking it on, who I can pitch to, and get an investment to both make the next prototype, and then fit a bunch of electronics to this one as a test bed, which can then be transferred over to the new prototype. But with the actuators not being particularly cheap, and the things I need for another prototype, that's all just kind of on the back burner for the minute. And I'm just focusing on improving the general design overall in any way that I can do. So thank you all for watching. I've got some other videos on the project that are a bit longer, going into more things on detail. There will be more to come in the future. So I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and feel free to like and subscribe.